reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I might also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. So, there's been a lot of darkness lately. Not just last night. I mean that metaphorically. You know I do. Right away, you instantly knew I did. And here we are in the nice, beautiful, bright light of day. Uh, and we're going to talk about darkness. Because actually, as the metaphor works, it doesn't matter whether it's day or night. Um, darkness is something you feel. Um, it, it's, always, it's always struck me that... Uh, it's always struck me that we always talk about this story as being a story of light, this Christmas story. I am the light of the world. The light comes into the world. The light, the light, the light. We're always talking about the light. That's great. Don't get me wrong. That's super. Uh, it's just the story is about darkness. Think, think about the story for a second. I always, whenever I, whenever I read a Bible story like this, I always try to like, imagine how the story goes. And sometimes, sometimes the story looks very much like um, a, a movie probably one of those great epic ones made in the 50s, you know, probably had Charlton Heston as the older Jesus or something like that, you know. Um, and uh, I, for some reason, I have it in my head that the angel Gabriel visits Mary in the middle of the day. I think there's a song maybe about that. Um, and, and to be fair, when Mary and Joseph travel to Bethlehem, they're going to travel during the day, right? Because they want to find somewhere safe at night because the road's not particularly safe, but they travel during... Everything else happens in the dark. When the, the, uh, the baby's born, it's at night because they got there late, right? And the place was everywhere. It's full. You know the story. Um, when the angel, angel appears to the shepherds, the, the shepherds are in the fields with their sheep at night. And then the shepherds go immediately to Bethlehem, so they get there at night. How do the magi get there? They follow the star, which they can only see at night. So the magi traveled at night. It's, there's so much darkness in this story, and that's just the real darkness. 
not the fear part. There's so much real darkness in this story, and into that darkness breaks this light. Um, the light that uh, is prophesied, right? We, we hear that prophecy in Isaiah, um, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Or the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. We, we read those prophecies as meaning Jesus. Of course, at the time, they actually meant something else. But we read them as part of our tradition as meaning Jesus. The light has come. And in the story, in the story, uh, the glory of the Lord shone round about them. The light of the star guides the magi. You're not seeing any of that light unless there'd been darkness for the light to break into. Even in the beginning, it, go back to the beginning of Genesis. In the beginning, there was darkness and light. In fact, they were equal in the beginning. And actually, there was probably darkness first, even. Darkness is important. We're, we're all over this story about it being light. Light. It's about light. But you know, if you stare at the light long enough, you are nothing but blind. You need to recognize that the point of that light is that it is shining in the darkness and it illuminates something. If there's nothing there for it to shine on, you won't see anything. The point of the light isn't just the light itself, it's what it illuminates. So what does it illuminate? What does the light bring out of this story? Uh, Jesus. It brings Jesus. But as, as I was saying to the kids, do you think for the Magi that was enough? They knew this prophecy. They knew this prophecy that there would be a great king, a great ruler. And at the time, sure, okay, they would have expected a specific thing. And so when they arrive at the, the, uh, this poor little place in the middle of nowhere and with these parents who are only there because they're required to be there because somebody told them to be there because they're too poor to say no um, and here's this little kid um, do you think that was what they were expecting to find and th the answer is yes by the way but only after they realize that it isn't that that literal king thing isn't what they're looking for the light has shone on something different. It's shone on something unexpected. They expected the same thing that's been expected for thousands of years, and it was something different. And when Jesus grows up, it's even something more different, something more unexpected. So right away, right away, this light leads us to the unexpected. What else does the light shine on? The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon them has the light shone. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This isn't just a story about illuminating Jesus. The season of Epiphany, it's called Epiphany, by the way, because Epiphany means revealing. So over the next six, five weeks, I think it's six this year, sometimes it's, I think seven's the most it can be, but it takes us to Lent, which, by the way, is the time of, traditionally, the time of darkness in the wilderness, right? We're going to talk about that when we get there, you can bet. But the season of Epiphany is the season of revealing. It's stories of Jesus being revealed as Jesus the one that was promised. And it starts with this story of the Magi following the star. The prophecy is fulfilled. Here is Jesus. The prophecy is fulfilled. Wait a minute. You said the prophecy said a great ruler who has been, uh, I think it says, from the, from the beginning, who has been here, whose origins are of old. We know what that means. Except that isn't what it means. The light is illuminating something deeper, something more significant, something more important. So 
look at this season coming ahead, these, these stories of Jesus being revealed. The one that we actually should be hearing today, by the way, because this is not actually the day of Epiphany. That was yesterday. Today is the first Sunday of Epiphany, and the traditional story on the first Sunday of Epiphany is the baptism of Jesus. It's when the adult Jesus comes to the River Jordan and is baptized by John the Baptist. Um, the clouds part, a dove, in some versions of the story, a dove alights on Jesus, and a voice is heard saying, this is my beloved son. Jesus is revealed as the Son of God. Shazam, there we go. What does that mean, though? What does that mean? Are you now staring at the Son of God and being blinded? Or are you seeing what that actually means in the stories that come out of that? So each week in Epiphany, I'll, I'll, by the way, I'll be just harassing you mercilessly about this. Each week um, in Epiphany, we're going to hear these stories about the revealing of Jesus. And the thing is that those stories don't just reveal Jesus because the light shines on you. It's not just about us sitting there and watching and going, oh, look, it's Jesus. It's how the light illuminates you too because the light shines on you. So the thing about this, these, this story of Christmas is it's wonderful to look at that, to look at that manger scene. It's a lovely pastoral scene. It's beautiful. Let's admire that. And then a couple of days later, I actually read, somebody, I actually saw somebody on Facebook saying they'd put away their Christmas decorations, I think it was the third day after Christmas. Christmas, they actually even said, I've put Christmas away. If you've done that, by the way, good for you. That's fine. Okay. But you can't, can you? You can put your decorations away, but you can't put Christmas away. You just can't because it's every day. That's the point. Love comes into the world every day. You can watch it or you can make it happen because the light shines on you. The whole point of this darkness, this light in the darkness thing, isn't to be, be blinded by the sun, but to see what it shines on. And it shines on you. It shines on the world. It shines on every moment of darkness we experience every day in our lives. And it illuminates something. And our learning from this story is what it shines on, what it, what it illuminates for us which is the way is love. It's, it's that simple. The way is love. And you reflect that into the world. The light shines on you, and you reflect that light into the world. How are you going to do that? Well, lucky for you, if you come every Sunday for the next uh, five or six weeks, there's... That sounds like a sales pitch, didn't it? Uh, this is, but this is a point. This is a point. We can't leave this. I, said, I think I said this on Christmas Eve. You can't leave Jesus in the manger. He's got to get up and walk. He's got to, just like we do. You're, you're not going to just sit here now forever. Please don't. Um, at, the end of, at the end of the service day, you're going to get up and you're going to walk. You're going to go into the rest of the week. You're going to go and live your life. So how are you going to do that? Are you going to go, well, that was an hour I'm not going to get back anytime soon? Or are you going to go and live the experience of us being together here this morning, of hearing a story about Jesus, of hearing a story about how um, people who expected a certain thing found something completely different and then went away rejoicing and, and praising God for having had this experience, their life having been illuminated for them. There's no, there's no other stories in, uh, in the Bible, of course. There's no other stories about what, where the wise men went or what they did. I'd say, even, man, I feel like I'm 12 years old again. Wise men, the Magi, the, the three kings, whatever you want to call them, or the, I don't know, however many there were in that picture just back when the, the kids were up here. But there's no stories about what, that, what happened to them. So where do you think that, what, what do you think happened to them? I think they actually just went home and went, well, that was nice. Next, or do you think that story changed them somehow? 
Do you think it maybe illuminated something about their own lives and changed their own lives? Because we, we come here too. We follow the SAR. We hear the stories. And we can either let them sit here and leave them behind, or we can let them inform us, illuminate us, and take that into the world. The light shines on you. Share it with others. Reflect it into the world around you. Let the world see the light through you. We're, we're all stars. We are. We're all stars. I don't know if you remember the, uh, the, the, the kids uh, in Basha last year, I want to say last year, um, did a play. Well, I guess it was a year ago now, officially, 2016, um, where the idea, the concept, whole concept of this little play was that, that we are all, uh, in the beginning, we are all, our souls are all stars in the sky. And when we come, when we are born, we come to from that star to here. And so the story is about all the, this little star that needs to find his way. And it turns out, of course, that the little star is Jesus. Um, but we're, we're all stars. We're all lights in the sky. I don't know how many times I can repeat this metaphor now, but you are a star. You're a star. Are you going to bask in the glory of people staring at how beautiful you are? Or are you going to go and light the world? Please go and light the world.